Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. think you could do it, but tell you to try when they talk. All I hope had to keep it alive. Spend a day in the Bronx, but you wouldn't survive. Can be low when I pop out, they know I've arrived. I go have conversations with Zoe. We gon' tell me, pull up and come say what you know. I've been up, I can count all them days in a row. We don't say what we do, we be making the show. They say I'll be the voice of the Bronx. We have Bronx playing with the guys that are out here. Can I get a year? Right where they at, try to diss me, I bet I don't even react Put a show on, I bet you somebody gon' yeah, yeah. I pick me a book up and drink me some water and Invest in the stock, all them on back Alright, peace and love world, welcome to another episode of Conversation with Zoe Happy Women's Month um, the, the Women's Month uh, Conversation with Zoe continues um, We have one of my dear sisters, beloved friends here uh, We have Chastity here um, I want to start with a quote, right? It says, uh Forgive yourself for not knowing what you didn't know before you learned it. And that's by Maya Angelou. My favorite. Right. Um, she is the CEO, um, the sweetest pub in PR. What's a USN? USN, United States Navy. United States Navy. So you're a, you're a veteran. A, you're a vet. Didn't know that. That's why you wore the, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's Army, but, you know, in the Army same. Army but still, you know. Right. Uh, NSU alum. Norfolk State University, behold the green and gold. Right. Shout out to my fellow Spartans. Right. Cum laude club. So I graduated cum laude. Very smart, very intelligent. Yes, I'm, I'm very smart. Right. You know, and you know, along with smart, I'm very consistent and I'm committed. Right. So yeah. Right. I gotta move something. Come here. Okay. Hold on. Closer, closer, closer. Right. In my hat. Right here. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. Um, you represent Matt Hoffa. Mm -hmm. Um, Tiana eight ten. Mm -hmm. Tiana Wallace. Tiana Wallace, daughter of Biggie Smalls. Beautiful, and Black Ink Spider, and many more. Yeah, and more. Right. Yeah. Do you have a favorite client? <laughs> I don't have a favorite client. Yeah. All of my clients have qualities that I love about them individually. Right. You know, so I don't necessarily have a favorite. I can say the client that makes me laugh the most is Spider. Right. I can see that. Yeah. He is super lighthearted. Right. He is very nurturing. And he always wants to make sure, like, I'm okay. Right. So he he's just hilarious. So. Right. Uh, you're a sapiosexual. Yeah, so I love intelligence. Right. I love intelligence. It's not about, you know, I love a attractive person. Right. But sometimes attractiveness is on the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, someone can be beautiful on the outside, not intelligent. Right. Not sweet, mm -hmm. you know, and just all physical looks and that's not enough for me you have to be smart right so if someone has an extensive vocabulary it gets you wet yeah all right basically basically yeah all right we're gonna get you warmed up okay <laughs> so this is facts or cap okay right men ain't shit say it one more time men ain't shit cap Ooh. women ain't shit cap publicists can be petty Facts. I heard you got hella hoes. Cat. I heard you have only fans. Cat. <laughs> All right, ready to go. Ready to go. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, so this is Aries. Fun facts. Oh, okay. Right? I am an Aries, so. Aries have low tolerance for bullshit. You know, I think that's a cat. Okay. Uh, for me, I'm super patient. I meet people where they are. Okay. And I feel like, depending on the circumstance, you have to give people grace. Right. You know, it's tough. I love that. Aries has the balls to get stuff done and to say the things that everyone else wants to say. Depending on the situation. Okay. I feel like... As a person, I've evolved spiritually and mentally. Right. When I was younger, yes. Right. I would definitely just, you know, say how I feel, even when sometimes people didn't ask. Right. Now that I'm mature, more mature, right. 
um, more seasoned, more spirit- spiritually connected. Right. I just, I, I have choice words and some things are just better left unsaid. Right. Some things are better left where they are. Right. What are choice words? What are choice words? Yes. Choice words are words that I feel people use that are offensive. Okay. Like, fuck you, Uh bitch, Uh asshole. Uh Um. Piece of shit. Right. Things like that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and Aries is an overthinker, an overfeeler, and an overlover. Fact. All three. Fact. Uh, Fact. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Aries qualities. Leadership, strength, and power. Fact. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, giving them a pioneering spirit. We are the first. Right. We are well, number one. What would you say a pioneering spirit is? We're leaders. We are, we're leaders. Right. You know, we set the trend. We set the example. Mm-hmm. I feel like we think out of the box. Right. One thousand percent. Um, we we're fearless. I feel like Aries people, not all, I can only say for myself. Right. I am not scared to put myself out there. Right. I'm not scared to try something once. I'm not scared of a challenge. Right. I'm not scared to be myself, live in my truth, and do all the things that I want to do. Because I feel like when you live in your truth and you do the things you want to do, you set the highest example. Right. You have a story, you know, especially when you're successful. Right. So that's a part of pioneering right. is being you, doing things that other people don't, trying things that other people don't that will work right. to pave the way for the next person. Right. Right. And I can, I feel like I can second that sentiment just because a lot of the things that I I do and I'm a part of, no one around me that I know before I coming into conversation with Zoe has done, you know, so everybody would kind of always look at me like, what's up with Zoe? Like he's always doing something way out of the ordinary, but now everything is podcasting is normal. Mm -hmm. You know, 2018 though, it was kind of like, why is he posting his content? Like, why is he saying these things? Why is he talking about healing and therapy and this and that? But now everybody's doing it, Mm -hmm. you know, but I was just doing what I felt. And when you learn to live with your truth, you're not looking, you know, you know, you can be your own fan. You can be your own number one fan. You're not looking for validation, even though we all need it in some way, shape or form, but it doesn't, it doesn't move you. Right. Cause you're still going to post it. Right. Right. I'm still going to send it to you. I don't care. Here it is. Right. You know, like it or not, move it, leave me. I don't care, but here it is, you know, and I've been like that unapologetically for years now. Good. And I love that for you. Thank you. You know, I remember when we met and just, we always have really real conversations. Right. And I appreciate that. We'd be in the club having deep ass conversations. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Because, you know, when you meet somebody that understands right. healing, that understands mental health, that understands that in order to be the change you want to see, it starts within right. those conversations. Right. Can be had anywhere. Anywhere. Because there's always some chaos around you. Right, right, especially right. with the things that we do. Mm-hmm. Right? So we always have to either watch. Right. And take a step back. And when you have somebody around you that aligns with the thing you the things that you align with. Right. It's exciting every time. Right. So I can say that. Love that. So Aries are fearless. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aries take initiative. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Aries are straightforward. Yeah, you know, to a certain extent. Again, it just depends. Right. Yeah, it depends. But, you know, I I enjoy being a straight shooter when I can. Right. Uh, As far as in PR and being a publicist, I have to be a straight shooter in a lot of situations in business. And then for me, I think, again, I choose the things that 
I put my energy into now. Yeah. So it's like I'm a straight shooter in business, but when it comes to like my personal life and just things, other things other than that, I'm kind of right. just like, you got to give people grace. Right. Yeah. Right. How was your childhood? My childhood. Wow. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Um, my mom, you know, my mom and my dad raised me. My dad didn't live with us, but he was very, very instrumental in my life. And my brother, uh, he is deceased. He um, was murdered when I was 10 years old. Wow. So he was like my second dad. He took me everywhere. He uh, exposed me to a lot of things. He actually wanted to be in the industry that I'm in. He was in the right. industry that I was in. Um, He danced. And he also like just... Did so many things, okay. DJed and a whole bunch of things. So my childhood was pretty dope when he was murdered when I was 10. It was my first, the first loss in my life. Right. And um, I can say it changed me because I had somebody there that protected me. Right. And with every step. And my dad did the same, but my brother lives with me. Right. So it was, you know, I kind of had to navigate life on my own in a, in a way. Right. And I say that because I can speak to my brother about certain things. Your parents, as like, right. they don't understand. Right. So that was tough. But after that, um, I also, like, I really, really dived in writing. Right. That's how I started writing. Right. Because when my brother was murdered, I took the paper to pen, pen to paper. Right. I started writing poetry um, to express my feelings right. because I was not really great at it. Right. Uh, and it grew. Like, my mom was like, you actually have talent. Right. You know, like, to be so young, you have talent. So I used that. I used writing as an outlet. Right. And that turned into writing writing articles, writing journal writing and right. just writing in general. Um, but my childhood was also in between the laws. It was it was happy. My mom right. is amazing. She's my bestie, you know. Right. So I was really thankful to have her in my life. And my dad was also pretty dope, you know. Right. He was they were they're two different people. Right. So I had the best of both worlds. I had education. I went to the best schools. I went to high school. I went to a public school, but that was still a dope school because it was only a school of maybe five hundred Brooklyn right. College Academy High School. Right. So, you know, I my mom was very, very, very serious about giving me a quality education right. and very serious about education, you right. know? So that followed me. Right. Yeah, that followed me. Uh, do you know who killed your brother? So I don't know the person per se. Right. Um, I know that he's affiliated with someone that was cool with my brother. But my brother was saving somebody else's life. Mm. Yeah, and trying to save somebody else's life, his oh, life yes. was robbed from him. Right. Yeah, so I don't know him, you know, and I don't think that he's living anymore, though. Right. Um, and, you know, I just I feel bad for people in general who don't deal with trauma. Right. Because that's what that was, trauma. Right. That's the only thing it can be. Right. You have to be a, a person that went through a bunch of trauma to kill somebody else. Right. You know, so. Understandable. Yeah. That's true. So, describe high school chastity. Ha! <laughs> this is great. Um, high school chastity. High school chastity was fearless. I was the girl in bell-bottom pants and Spice Girl shoes. Right. You know, and... I wore Jordan here too, and right. of course I had newer faces, but I also had red hair. Right. Um, I was very smart in high school, but I was misunderstood. Right. I didn't have that many friends because, 
you know, I love writing so much. Like, that was just my outlet. So right. I didn't have any a lot of friends because I was misunderstood. Right. And I didn't have a lot of friends because I wasn't really good at expressing myself. Right. So me expressing myself through writing, it was all I really had. Right. Um, I was a part of the new youth co- the new youth collective new newspaper right so now i think it's called like nyc something whatever but right. it was a there was a newspaper in manhattan right. and it went to all the schools in the tri state right. so everywhere sorry not the tri state but the new york city right. you know the borough and in the boroughs right. right and um i think that was amazing i performed poetry at different poetry slams in high school. Right. I was that girl uh, with the fake ID sneaking into the New York Weekend right. Cafe to perform, um, sneaking into different poetry slams around the city. Right. So that was, you know, my thing. Shout out to Vim. Shout out to Excelsior. I also, you know, just did my own thing right. in high school. Uh, I graduated when I was 16 years old. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, high school was all right, you know. I just, it wasn't where I met met a lot of friends, but I knew a few people. Right. Well, who were you, say, some of the poets that you looked up to? Maya Angelou, 1,000%. Love her. So I love that I got that quote. Yo, it was on point. I was like, wow, look at God. Right. Um, Nikki Giovanni, um... So Maya Angelou and Nikki Giovanni were my favorites. Right. What would you say is a poem that speaks to you? Ooh. A poem that really, really speaks to me. Maybe not a poem. Maybe the book. I know why I okay. covered things. Okay. You know, and that had a bunch of poems in it. Right. So that book was really, really influential. Right. So how was college? College was great. College is where I really met a lot of my lifelong friends now. Yeah. Um, I graduated when I was 16 again. I went to BMCC because I graduated in January. Right. And that was dope because I was the youngest in my class. Right. And um, my cousin was on the basketball team, so she was already cool. So I kind of, like, had her click. Then I went to Delaware, Delaware State University. Right. And it was great. Like, I didn't do much. I didn't go to class much. I feel like I was way too young to be at a HBCU. Right. Um, I didn't bomb, but I didn't do as well as I was supposed to. But again, I met my lifelong friends. So I skipped a lot of class. I ate a lot of cat food. Right. Smoked a lot of bud. Right. And just did my thing. Drank drank a bit or two, you know, like. That's where I kind of learned what life was independently. Right. You know, so right. I loved it. I, I really, really love college. Is that why you went to the Navy? So, no, I went to the Navy. My mom and my dad is going to kill me. I'm not going to tell this whole story. Okay. But what I will say is I crashed my mother's car and my dad, I said, Daddy, I do not have the money. Like, what am I going to do? Can you help me pay? Because my dad spoiled me my whole life. Like, I'll be like, Dad, this is what I want, and I'll have it. So this particular time, I was like, Daddy, like, can you help me? And he's like, I'll help you, but you have to do one thing for me. He took me downtown Brooklyn to the recruiting area, and he told me to pick one. Wow. And I picked the Navy. And it changed my life. I don't regret it. Right. And that was his way of like, I'm going to save you from yourself. Yeah, that was his way. Because my dad's a Marine. Okay. Yeah, my dad is a Marine. Shout out to my dad, Derek. He was a Marine. And, you know, he kind of, I guess, knew what that did for him. Right. So he sent me. And I, I literally didn't have any complaints. I didn't fight. I was just like, my only request... <laughs> was to get me out of there before my mom came. Right. Because at that time, I wasn't sure if he was really going to pay for it. Right. How'd you crash it? 
blame it on the uh, 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 mm. alcohol. And I hit, I was coming out the Roosevelt Hotel. I hit um, a van with a bunch of non-documented people. Mm. And they were just like, go, go, go. Go. Because they didn't want the cops to come. Right. So they let me go. I could have been arrested. You know, right. I wasn't able to be driving. I had a learner's permit. I didn't even have my license yet. No. I don't even think I had a learner's permit. I'm not sure. Right. I just know I wasn't supposed you to. You was driving like you had some. I was yeah. driving like I had some. Yeah. Mm. Would you say in the midst of these years, would you have a bit of a hoe face? <laughs> wow, what a question. I feel like everybody has a whole phase. Right. Yeah, definitely. Especially when you're trying to learn yourself. Right. So 100%. You right. know, I, I didn't know myself. I didn't, and I really didn't have confidence in myself. You right. know, I really didn't have that thing. So I wouldn't say I had a whole phase in college. Right. I would kind of say I had a bit of a whole phase, maybe in the mil in like the beginning of my military career. Right. But I curb I've curbed it quickly. Right. I learned that's not how you do it. Right. I mean, was it like special privileges or treatment? Or <laughs> no. Well <laughs> maybe one person. Right. Yeah. I didn't do it for that though. Right, right, right. Like I really, I really like that question that you said. Like a lover, I'm right. such a lover, and I'm an right. empath, and you know, I like to be loved. I like to be hugged. So right. it was just one of those things where this is somebody that I actually like, and I right. actually speak to him to this day. Like he's right. super proud of me. He's super great, and um, yeah. So that in that sense, yeah, because right. he was is, a higher rank than me. Is he married? Is he married now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So he's not trying to shoot his shot? No, like, nah, it's really no. all support. Right. It's really all support. He's really dope. Like, nah, he just champions me. Like, right. he he checks in here and there, here and there. Right. Yeah. Did you guys have, like, dorms in the Navy or, like, this is, like, an open tent? I don't so know. So we like... had barracks. Uh -huh. We had barracks. Um, They were really small. Well, I, you know what? My bed was about this big. And right. then we had a cubby where you lift your bed up and that's where all of your things stayed. Right. So it was it was like that and it was super small. If I stood up, if, when I'm laying down, I can't sit up in my rack. I was right. on the bottom rack, which right. was like the best, honestly. Right. But the middle rack was the worst. You know, you can't really leverage yourself. Right. At least the bottom, I could be right on the floor. Right. Yeah. And how long were you in the Navy? I did four years active and four years in active reserve. So um, in active reserve is that where they can call you, but you don't have to get called. But I did four active. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So like Veterans Day is important to you. It is. I always make sure I get my free meal. Right. Sometimes I ride the train for free because I can. Right. Depending on how I feel. Because I drive everywhere right. usually, but... You know, I I take advantage of yeah. Veterans Day. And being a veteran is important to me. Yeah. Um, I'm active in my veteran community, not as of late, but, like, I have a, I have a veteran community everywhere that I go. Right. So now we're going to get into what you do for a living. Or one of the things you do, but you're a publicist. Mm -hmm. And by definition, a person responsible for publicizing a product person or company yeah right now we have some publicist fun facts okay right and you can tell us how you feel about them mm. publicists help businesses grow at every stage that's a fact publicists are multi-skilled professionals fact what are some examples of these multiple skills for one to be a publicist, you have to have some kind, some level of communication, effective communication. You have to be a people person. You have to have great writing skills. Right. Negotiation. Ah, uh, that's full circle moment on the writing. 
Right. You know, like you have to have th- these skills to do this job. And that's honestly how I got into PR because yeah. I, w- I wanted to be a journalist. And then when I was in college, I took a cl- broadcast journalism class. Right. And the cameras were so hot. Right. And I have a lisp. I don't know if you hear it. Like light. And I stuttered really bad back then. Not too bad, but bad enough that it bothered me. Right. And I was like, I don't know if I could do this. Right. And then I took a public relations class. And I was like, I can write. I can be behind the scenes. And I can still do this, you right. know? So that's what intrigued me about it. I like that. Publicists do more than just advertise. Yeah. But it's like, I can just talk about me. I don't know about other publicists. Right. Um, I, for me, in the podcast space, I produce. I am, on a personal level, I'm a confidant. Right. Um, publicist. Uh, your right hand, right. you know, um, I make sure that with some of my clients, like they're good mentally right. because of my skill set, because of my love for mental health. Right. You know, I check in on my, my clients and make sure they're doing OK. Like, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts? Things like that. So we are so much more than just advertisers right that's like the textbook answer right every publicist does different things and has their skill sets so right well definitely shout out to miss montana i'm gonna put your government out there Letitia Wright. i love Jack. you you're my lady right i love you you're the best we love montana i'm saying so she, she's taking i just needed i you always need a woman's touch right mm-hmm. and everything She's been able to push, you know, conversation with Zoe, get me in rooms that I wasn't in before. And we've just been growing, helping each other. And we're like brother and sister, you know, and we really look out for each other and we really just make things happen together. So I really appreciate you, Montana, for everything that you do. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, I got to pull this up to, to actually make my point. Hopefully it doesn't, it's not too loud. Shout out to Montana. She's amazing. And because of you, I met her. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was the Oscars the other night. Mm -hmm. And an actress, I didn't watch it. So I just saw this scrolling. And I don't want an awkward moment, so I'm sorry. So I'm going to ask the next question. Publicists create strong media relationships. Yes. That's a 1,000%. You have to because we need them. We need the media. Right. We need the media to get you where you need to go. Right. So, yeah, we, we definitely, we have to make those relationships. And people think it's easy. It's not. Sometimes the media doesn't care. You know, right. they don't, sometimes I, I've represented really, really big power players. And right. They might not care if they're big. You know, right. it's a relationship. You have to water the media right. and you have to figure out your way of doing it. Right. But I did find what I was going to say. Beautiful. So, Davina Joy, she made a speech at the Oscars the other night and she said, they told me not to, but I have to thank my publicist. And my if it wasn't for my publicist, I don't know where I would be. And I say that because I had to highlight that quote. Because sometimes it's a very thankless job. Right. People don't understand what we go through. Negotiating is not easy. Dealing with people all the time is not easy. Getting your clients in these rooms aren't easy. And mm-hmm. if you have a difficult client, it definitely isn't easy. Right. So you have to be a special person to do this job. And I feel like some people really undervalue that. Right. So I had to highlight that. 
It's really, really important. And I really love the fact that you highlighted Montana. Right. Because Montana is bomb. She's amazing. And I think that it is very important for every person who has a publicist to just say, you're doing a great job. Yeah. I appreciate you. You know? Because it's not easy. So, yeah. that's all. Very tasty, cheesy, onion, all of the above. One word to describe it, scrumptious. Right? We from the town, so we just gonna say pause first, but it melts in your mouth. You just love it. You know what I'm saying? I wear this shirt to sleep. How much I love Savage Street Burger, man. It's near and dear to my heart. You see the logo? It's near to my heart. That's how we do it, man. Peace. Absolutely. Definitely shout out to Miss Montana again. Yeah. Uh, publicists provide the most cost efficient way to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Because we pull in sponsorships. Right. To help you grow. Um, and sometimes. <laughs> excuse me. Oh my God, can you edit? <laughs> okay. Um, and and not sometimes, but our relationships. Right. Our relationships help bring down a lot of costs. Right. And that's true. a fact. That's just true. Publishers do more than just media placements. Yeah. I just gave you a a, a list right. of things that I do. So yeah. Right. Uh publishers are incredibly persuasive. Yes. Yes. Someone told me that, like, someone said that to me, like, you're so charming and charismatic. So, yes. Right. Yeah, we have to have those qualities. Publicists don't have a nine-to-five job only. No. It's, we don't. Right. It's 24-8. Right. Yeah. How do you become a publicist? It depends, you know. I know some publicists that went to college. I went to college. I have a degree in public relations. Right. Some some people don't. Right. It depends on your relationships, your situations. Right. I know some publicists who have law degrees. I know some publicists who um, were wanted to be journalists. Right. So it just all depends on your walk, right? right. Like sometimes you can have a friend that blow that blew up. Right. And your communication skills can just be amazing. And I know publicists in that position, right. family members. So, you know, my way was going to school right. and interning. And, you know, other people have different ways. So for you, how how important is education? Extremely important. I like to read books. You know, I have a tattoo of books, flying books on my arm. I love to read books because they're made... To educate you. Right. No one can take away your knowledge. Right. People could talk about how you may execute something. People can talk about um, how you do things. Anything. They can't take away the knowledge that you have and tell you that you don't know what you're talking about. So knowledge is important. Education is important. Love that. What are some of your pet peeves? Some of my pet peeves are unkind people. I feel like a lot of people in this world aren't kind. You know, it's such a self-serving world. And I feel like people don't think about the next person. It's all about what am I going to get out of it? Right. Or it's like, if you're not somebody, I don't want to talk to you. Mm. So that's one. Um, people that are unkind. Gatekeepers. Mm. Yeah, gatekeepers are my pet peeve. My career, my career choice is tough, and I've met a lot of gatekeepers. So I've always said I want to be the change that I want to see. It starts with me. So I don't gatekeep at all. What I actually probably overwater. Right. You know? Um, so yeah. What do you think the mindset of a gatekeeper is? Somebody that's scared to share information because they're not confident in their skill or they have trauma that they have to deal with and they feel like if I, if I put somebody on, they might lose their spot. Mm -hmm. 
or if I put somebody on, that's my name. So if they do something, then that's my name and I might lose my spot. I feel like it's all about placement. And for me, I feel I... I'm a person where if it's for you, it's for you. Right. So nothing is going to stop that, right? Right. So if I have a resource where I can help somebody, I'm going to give it to them. Right. Especially if they're a hardworking person. I'm not talking about a Joe Schmo. Right. But if they're a hardworking person and I believe in them, I'm going to give it to them because they're going to get it anyway. Right. So why not be a positive fixture in their story? I love that. What are your boundaries? My boundaries. I just started learning boundaries. Okay. Lately. And within the past six months. Okay. Um, some of my boundaries is respecting my meditation time. You know, I talk to God in the rising. If, you, if people follow me, they know that I'm always going to take a picture of my view. I'm always going to take a picture of my affirmation cards and you know, I'm going to do my face regimen. That's my meditation time. I meditate for at least 15 to 30 minutes before I start my day. Um, and I send them out to my family. Well, family and friends, people right. who I consider family, um, right. that actually need it. So that's a boundary. Also, my boundaries are not doing too much for people who don't deserve it. I came up in a space of getting to the bag, right? Grinding and doing before you get paid or doing the most because you want people to see you. And I had to set boundaries because when you do things like that, sometimes you don't get that respect or you may not get that opportunity because people walk all over you. Right. Depending on your value. Right. So, I give a little. I give enough for you to see my worth. If you don't see my worth in the time span that I feel like you should or, or, or what makes sense, the boundary is that now, you know, we can't work together. Or... We can't do business together, but we can still be cool, you know? So that's a boundary. Um, And I'll say spiritual alignment. Right. I like to work with people who are just as spiritually aligned as me. Grateful, thankful, uh, and just, like, cherish cherish his time and opportunity. Right. So it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter who you are. If you don't have those values, I can't work with you. So that's a boundary for me. I love that. Would that would that fall under your non negotiables? Mm, that one, yeah. Right. Yes. I was thinking like that one, yes. Right. Yeah. I feel like I've earned it, right? Yes. I feel like I've earned my peace. I feel like I've earned this where I am today mentally and the work that I've done for myself to be the person I am. Right. And the only people I should have around me are those who are the same. But anything other than that will not is not going to bring me peace. Anything other than that is not going to... Elevate me. And I want to be elevated and stimulated all the time. I don't want to work with somebody who thinks they know everything. Right. Because how am I going to grow? You know? Right. Very true. What are some do's and don'ts as a publicist? Mm, Do's. Always bring the next person up. Um, Do's. Always make sure you have your client's best interest at heart. Jews, um, always make sure your relationships are on point. Right. Relationships, relationships, relationships. Always make sure that is. Don't, do not burn bridges. 
That's a no-no. Um, do not... It's something that I want to say that... It's not still people's work, but do not still people's clients. You know, you don't do that. Yeah. Um, you give credit where it's due. So those are some don'ts. And and don't be an asshole. Right. Yeah. I feel like those are very those are very all valid points. Yeah. You know, what about approaching the artist or person directly and, and going around the publicist? So in some cases, that can happen, right? Right. Yeah. So say I met you first. And we fostered a relationship, right? right? And then I needed you for something. I met your publicist, but I needed you for something because we have a relationship. Right. Sometimes asking you would just be second nature because I have a relationship with you. Right. The recommended is to ask your publicist, but there's always um, exceptions to the rule, you right. know? So it just depends on the situation. Right. You know when that exception to the rule is. Mm. You know. Right. I'll give an example. I, me and Montana are great, you know, but, like, I spoke to you mostly. Right. With this interview, because we have a relationship, too. Right. But Montana knew all the steps. Right. So as long as, like, you're not going around. Right. Because your, the, your publicist knew what was going on. Yes. But I'm talking to you. So right. that's an example um, of the exception. Right. Yeah. When what's wrong is when an artist has a an artist has a publicist or talent has a publicist, and a publicist goes to them with a proposal, a way to make money, something like that. That's when it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, that's right. nasty work. Right. Because if that's the case, you talk to the publicist. Like, I have an opportunity. How can we do this together? Right. To get this done for your client. How can we do this together that together to get this done for your client that may help one of my clients? Right. So, yeah. All right. Last few questions. What would be your message to your younger self? You are enough. You are enough. You are a star. Uh, your time of healing will come. And you're going to change the world. I love that. I've seen you, you've mentioned healing a lot. Yeah. Um, where were you in life where you felt like you needed to heal? I've been through a lot, you know, especially being in this industry, having self-doubt sometimes. And I can even say maybe as recent as Four years ago, you know, like not being sure, not being overweight, being unhealthy, smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, because I wasn't sure of myself. You know, I was yeah. in a fast paced industry trying to keep up, trying to figure it out, not practicing self care. And I realized, like, there's some other stuff there that you haven't face Chaz like yeah. get it together I um I literally I went to the doctor I was sick for a while because I was always like let's go I gotta go I can't miss a beat you know whether I was bartending or doing something with my client I would give it 110 percent because I was so hungry but I was also unhealthy and I also wasn't working out and I was also smoking and I went to the doctor and and the doctors told me that I had um, walk-in pneumonia. And if I would have came like a day late, that would have been bad for me. Right. So I was walking with a cough for like months. Literally, I did like a reality show pitch, a whole bunch of stuff. It was crazy. And I said to God, I said, God, please... Please let me kick this habit. Please let me stop smoking these cigarettes. Please let me let me stop drinking myself to right. death and not being healthy and eating all these bad foods. Like, right. please. And I promise you, like, I will 
give you everything you need from me spiritually. Right. I will heal. I'll figure it out. And it started just from losing the weight, all the outside stuff. Right. Then I realized that it's the inside stuff that you have to work on. So I'm doing all my stuff. I lost about 50 pounds. I look good. But I'm also like, there's something missing. So I started looking at things and, you know, looking into Queen of Four because when I was young, my mother would take her classes. We would actually go to her house yeah. and uh, she would, I would play with her kids and my mother would be in her classes. So I took it back to what I knew, mm. you know, and I then I just started doing my own research and we, I, I read a book <clears throat> called The Magic that right. changed my life. It's by um, Rhonda, Rhonda Byrne. <laughs> She's the author of The Secret. Right. That series. Right, right, right. And it was a, it's a 28-day practice. And it changed my life. And it was all about gratitude. And when I realized, like, I just have to be grateful, mm-hmm. all the things are going to happen. Your healing is going to be a lot easier. The opportunities are going to come. Everything is going to fall in place because you have gratitude, because you you appreciate your life where it's at. Right. It may not be perfect at that time, right. but because you are writing your affirmations down, your intentions down, you're making sure that all your T's are crossed or your dots are eyes. You're being a kind person. You're being cognizant of everything good. It's going to be fine. And really, that really helped with my healing right. because... I also gifted to the book to others, right. over like thirty people, right. you know, and, and 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 started talking about my story and and healing and God and what that happened and what that meant to me. So it's kind of bigger than the physical, which is right. where it started. It right. really really helped with my mental and my mental health. Man, this is uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, because. That's where things started for me too. I was twenty. I was nineteen, twenty, and um, no shots at the, at the Catholic Church. I was born and raised Catholic. Okay, but um, Baptist Church, they really, really hone in on your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. Like it's y'all two, you know. And speaking of gatekeeping, you know, I feel like, you know, in the Catholic religion, you know, it kind of all flows through the priest, like. I got to go to confession. I got to go mm-hmm. see him. Right? And it's like, you can tell God how you feel yourself. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you can talk directly. Like, you have a direct line. Direct line. To the bro. And he is. You know what I mean? And he is. I'm you know what telling mean? you. So, that to me was like, okay, like, this is where, like, God first and hard work. Like, that's what I would always tell my, like, my, like, Zoe's younger self. 11 years ago, God first and hard work. And everything I did, I just put God first. Like, I just, and then when I noticed that it wasn't working, it's because I was trying to be about, about myself. I was trying to, like, a little bit of ego. When they say easing God out, I say well, that's what ego is, right? I thought I'm, I'm good. Like, I know all of this. Like, nah, like, I had to humble myself, get back to the root of, of who put me on. You feel me? And no matter what, like, conversation cause was old, could become anything it wants to. But I know who put me on. Like, yes. my second episode ever. It's called God first. Like, mm. you feel me? Like, because, like, that's where it started, you know? And everything, even after that, my fourth episode started because my second episode is Khalif Browder. But every, I've always, you know, my faith has always been very prevalent in conversation with Zoe. Mm. You know, and people, yeah. people want to hear these blueprints. Listen, it started with God. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to tell you that. Thank like, you. I can't I lie to you. I'm, and I'm not, and I'm not scared. Or ashamed he to tell you that. where I started. Uh, like, oh, so. Like, it's with him. Yes, I just did a God talk. Right. With AJ McQueen. He's an artist out of Houston, Texas. Amazing artist. Right. And he came up with a panel discussion right. called God Talk. And it was with Joshua Dillard, uh, Candace Love, Docs, and Marcus Black. Mm-hmm. And we were all speaking about the importance of spirituality, prayer, meditation, all of these things that we have that are physical, all of these things that we have that are material, tangible, whatever it is on the outside, can be taken away from you immediately. Immediately. 
if you don't have that gratitude mm -hmm. and that love right. for the most high. Right. Because he's the only one pulling the strings. Right. So taking that time out and acknowledging God is important. Right. It's super important. I, I definitely got to quote my brother Smart. The smart guy is my brother. Um, I won't say the, the person's name we were talking about, but you'll kind of get a grasp of it. But he said what happened with the brother is what you call delayed destruction. So there's instant gratification where you get what you want right away. It looks like life is going, but then there's also delayed destruction mm. where maybe it'll take 20 years, 30 years for it to all crumble. So maybe it seems like everything is crumbling now at the end of last year and even into this year, but he got his instant gratification back way back when. Mm -hmm. And and now it's this delayed destruction where little by little, everything is kind of falling apart. You know what? I feel like with that, and you know, I know Smart, and right. and he says some things that I agree with. He says some things that I don't agree with. Right. That's something that I do agree with. I feel like when people don't have the right intention. Great word. Um, when people are not right with themselves, no matter who it is, how can they be good to others? Mm. It's like having blinders on, right? Like, if you're not good to yourself, how can you be good to others? And that delayed destruction, it's all about not healing trauma. Right. And again, it's having blinders on. Because you don't even know that you're doing it. Mm -hmm. You feel like everything is fine. You feel like, you know, it's everybody else. Right. And, you know, it's it's really you, you know. But, again, you yeah. have to make the choice. You have to know. It's kind of like having, um, uh, when they say you have a habit. Right. You know, it's like admitting that there's a problem. Right. It's like that, you right. know. And some people just don't feel like they have a problem. Right. I don't really talk about my partner a lot. But this is, you know, uh, how do you say it? It goes with what we're saying, right? We were at dinner the other day, and a lot of things that I was trying to do years ago, like I'm very proactive, mm -hmm. right? I'm I'm not uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take a bunch of punches in life if I know I don't have to, right? If it, if it's out of my control and it is what it is and that's the season, but if I know that certain things are gonna come down the line, then I'm going to prepare for those things, mm -hmm. right? Because you know preparations you know prevents poor performance. So when I offered, like, hey, I think you and I should go to couples therapy. She's like, no. And I was like, no, right? And ideally, this this couples therapy never really comes from a man. Like, no man is right. like, yo, we Usually need to go to. like, yo, yeah. let's do this. Right. Y'all like, uh-uh. And, and it was me. I was like, yo, like, whatever this dynamic is, like, we both don't know. Like, I don't know what to do anymore. And you obviously, like, we don't know the solution mm -hmm. and we don't have the tools or the resources to fix it. So I'm trying to meet you halfway mm. and, and, and find a different way because the other way is, is not going to lead me to anything good. You know, like me doing other things that I'm not supposed to be doing is, is mm -hmm. just going to put me in a really bad space. And I started doing Uber Eats, by the way. But it's like, let's get money. You know what I mean? Like, I got to put this energy somewhere. Right. So let's fucking get money. You right. know what I mean? So that was my outlet, right? Uh, you know? And something. Something, you know? But it was just and like... And you get your own time. Right. And I'm trying... But I'm like... She didn't see like, wow, you were really dead trying. Like, And if we want to be... It was... The first thing I tried to do was God. Listen, let's work on this faith. Let's pray together. Let's do this. Let's do that. She wasn't jacking that. Because you have to meet people where they are. Right? So I'm like, cool. Couples therapy. Okay. Right? That'll do us some good. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been to therapy myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really pushing nothing on you that I've never done myself. Correct. Right? And fast forward, we did that. It helped a lot. She ended up going into individual therapy. Helped that a lot. And I've seen her become a whole, totally different person. You know, more healed, more just like how she moves. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful to see. You know what I'm saying? As a person that's 
not running no more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you run out, you run out of gas. You know, and we we overcompensate on things. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So whether it's drugs, money, sex, alcohol, whatever it is, whatever your your vice is, mm-hmm. is what you're gonna overdo it on. You know what I'm saying? Even not having peace, right? You always have that yeah. friend that always wants to be around somebody. Can't be alone for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, you always got some boyfriend or somebody or somebody's around because you can't. You're not comfortable sitting in your room by yourself. I love that. Can I can I say something to that? I spent a lot of time by myself. Right. I was that person, though. Right. I always had to have somebody around me all the time. This past year, I lost my grandmother. Shout out to her. I lost her December 1st, um, 2023. But that this year, that year, 2023, yeah, I worked. I, I have clients and I have teams. But my alone time, I spent by myself. A lot of time because I felt like that's how you really get to know who you are so you can be the best self for, for everybody else. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So when you're moving into when you're moving into different spaces in your life, you know, like me, like conversation with Zoe doesn't fund my life, but I have a job and I'm happy where I'm at. I'm a dean. Yeah, you're great you know what at what you do. So it's like one of those things that I don't mind it taking its time Mm -hmm. because it's doing what it needs to do. You know, it's impacting people. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's thought provoking. It's everything I wanted it to be. And I'm, I'm honored to be here. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. Yeah. You know, it's doing, it's doing what it needs to be done. It's doing what it needs to do. Like, you know, give me what it needs to get. Exactly. Because we have, you know, no offense, but there's already enough love and hip hop and world star. There's enough of that. Right. It's entertainment. And that's also another let's overcompensate. Let's let's laugh all the time, right? Let's I always want to hear a joke because I'm running from the truth. Right. So I watch these things to distract me mm-hmm. from what I really need to be in tune with. Mm-hmm. You know, so I want to be informative. Yeah, we laugh, we joke, you know, I, I I get funny, you see the people who in the adult industry here, but even those be real conversations. Like, we really do talk. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? So, that's what I wanted, you know, and that's what I'm doing. Congratulations on everything. You You know, your consistency and your persistency, you being persistent is half the battle. You have it. Your content, your show is amazing. I love it. Um, I watch it when I can. I'm very busy, but when I can get to see clips, I watch it. And I've watched you grow just from recently, you yeah. know? Like, we just met not too long ago. Right. And I've, I have watch you grow, and I watch you hustle, and I watch you just do what you have to do, and you're a dope person. So yeah, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. On Conversations with Zoe. Thank you. I know that is... It's going to always give what it needs to give, right. and it's going to grow. Right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Last two questions. Okay. Message to young women out there. My message to young women out there is be authentic, be unapologetically you, and keep it positive because you can be you, and it can be and it, it can be a negative thing because you don't have the knowledge. Right. Keep it positive. Gain knowledge. Learn, get a mentor, have that time to learn you, to grow, to be a quality person. Don't just see the things that you emulate on TV that you feel like is the fastest way to get whatever you want. Right. Because it's not that, you know? Like, it's literally a journey. Life is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm-hmm. So make sure you're living righteous. Make sure that you're learning. Make sure that you're doing research. You're getting information. You're educating yourself Mm -hmm. because it's important. Nobody can take away your education. And when you have education, nobody can fool you. You will not tolerate certain things. So I want my young ladies to know that because even though my mom instilled that in me, life made me think differently. So I went through things that I should not have gone through. Mm. So I want young women to know that they're enough. And I want young women to know that they are 
gems. They are the prize in everything, whether it's work, whether it's relationship, everything. They're the prize. Love that. That word, that prize word is going to stir some stuff up, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. They are. We're, we're women. Right. We bear children. You know, we right. when people blame things that happen to children, they blame it on their mom first. Right. So why are we not the prize? I get it. And having, I just had my second son. You know, I like, know. Congratulations. Right. He's so yeah. cute. Thank you. Uh, Lennox was, oh, yeah, you've seen you, yes. the world, the world. Listen, um, I got to protect my kings, you know, so mm-hmm. only my peoples have seen them, you know. So cute. Um, the second child going th- like I was I was scared. Like the you first scared, because the first time it's kind of like you hype, like yeah, we here. Yeah. And the second time you're kind of more grounded. Uh-huh. Okay. And I'm like, yo, this is one hell of a thing for a woman to go through for you. Right. You don't think your woman's and surprised? I'm, and I'm helpless. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I know I am too. But yes, you are king. I know like that right there what she went through and i'm just helpless i'm just on my just coaching and praying and you know just being there as much as i possibly can it's like wow like she really went through all that i'm saying like all of that you know what i mean so um then you really really got to be there hold it down um understand that that that's one hell of a favor you know what I'm saying? Like, one hell of a Ooh, favor. that was good. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Hold it down. Find a way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look within yourself. Um, what you can do differently. Find systems. Find routines. Um, I definitely made dinner before I came here. You know what I'm saying? So, find ways to make it easier for her. You know what I'm saying? Why she's going through that. And, you know, shout out to all my female friends, you know, giving me um, different perspectives. Um because it gets hard, you know. I see why niggas walk out. I ain't gonna lie. I would never, but I could see why you could be like, "Yo, fuck this!" Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. on some human level, yeah. I get it. But don't do that, bro. Call your bros. That's why all my get all my therapy. friends that get therapy, fact conversations, therapy is get a gangsta. mentor. Yes. Same thing with men. And yes. Like, like you said, men men are the prize. There's some damn good men out there. Yes, man. I would never say all men ain't shit. Right. Because that's not the truth. Right. right? But again, you can understand you can understand why a man would walk out. Right. But you also understand how important a man's presence is in a child's life and in a woman's life. Mm -hmm. So you you chose positively. Yes. Just because you just because you understand doesn't make it right. Right. You know. So. Right. True. Very true. You know, um, last question. All right. Message to up and coming publicists. Messages, a message to up and coming publicists. You got this. You got this. Any client is a person. For me, when I started, I used to be nervous, even when I met like some some of my some clients when I interned and met celebrities and things like that. And I realized like they are people right. and they actually have more shit with them than you do. Right. You know, you are you are the help. Right. And I mean that in the, the most positive way. Right. You help them. Right. You are the go to. Right. You are the person that they lean on to be reminded that they're human. You are the person that they lean on to be reminded that they're enough. So you got this. You got this. And it's going to be okay. I love this. You know, so thank you for your time, your energy. Uh, Make sure you guys like, subscribe, comment. Um, Let us know what you want to shout out, where we can find you. So you can find me at Chastity Cox PR. We didn't talk about my cannabis processing business and my family, okay. but it's Dro Drink. Okay. Um, so look up Dro Drink. We have a cannabis drink. Um, it comes in pineapple, ginger, 
berry and original lemonade. So hit me up for that because that's awesome. Um, please go follow me on Instagram. Literally, you know, that's where I have all my content and all my healing stuff and all my positive vibes. Please check me out because I'm more than just, you know, a publicist. Right. I'm an example. I love that. I'm an example of being the change you want to see. Amen. So listen, this one's going to be a quick one. We drop on Friday. Okay. I'm saying I want to keep, I want to make sure I drop every week of Women's Month. So okay. stay tuned. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, shout out to all the beautiful women out there. Yes, yeah. shout out to all the beautiful women. It's Women's Month. Absolutely. So we got to cherish our queens at all times. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank I'm you. super thankful. Thank you for your time, presence, and energy. Gratitude. My attitude is gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That was amazing. Peace and love, world. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, support the channel, show your love. You know what I'm saying? We, we have a great conversation week in and week out. You never know who's coming. You never know what we're going to do. But at the end of the day, it's all about peace and love. So make sure you like, subscribe, comment.